everyone. Welcome back to 23rd Mind TV. Yeah, as usual these days, it's been a while, but um, um, that's just the way it is. And we are uh, also, as usual, very, very busy. And that's part of it, that we're just too busy to produce and uh, the days sort of float together. But it's overall a good and productive phase. And uh, so we're not complaining and we will try to catch up on everything that's happened so far because a lot has been happening. Yeah, we have made a lot of books. We've been kind of on a book rampage. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk oh. about all of those books and then a bunch of things that our friends have sent us. Oh, and oh, as always, if you're listening to this in the Rendering Unconscious Highbrow Low Life stream, then do go over to YouTube and watch the video of this episode because we're going to be showing a lot of uh, items. Mm -hmm. As usual. Um, and um, I can't even remember. I mean, the last episode, it was probably in February or something, like January even. Um, but um, it's I have this same feeling where uh, I this phase allows me to catch up on things. And of course, uh, that's a wonderful feeling because um, having many book projects, you know, not on the desk, but in the desk drawer or in my mind or in the recesses of my desire, whatever, uh, can be a frustrating thing. But this phase has allowed me to catch up. And one of the things that we have talked about before, but that actually came out as a book during this, this time, is different people. Uh, conversations on art, life, and the creative process. Uh, you've seen the cover flash by before, but now it's actually out and it contains uh, interviews with a lot of very interesting and inspiring people that I've met over the years, along with photographic portraits of them. So, and one thing that uh, has happened that has to do with this book uh, recently was the death of uh, June Newton, uh, who's in the book, uh, a.k.a. Alice Springs, a wonderful uh, photographer and friend. Uh, and she was also the, the widow of uh, Helmut Newton, the photographer. Uh, and in this book is a conversation we had in Los Angeles in 2007. Um, and it brings back um, nice memories for me to read it again and to have worked with it. And uh, unfortunately, she passed. She uh, became very old and uh, obviously lived a, lived a very charmed life. So I'm happy for her um, and uh, hope that she is uh, well on her way to wherever she's going. Uh, she was a great, great, great person and a great photographer. So uh, she's in the book, many other photographers, filmmakers, writers, musicians. You should really take a look at different people. It's a book that I'm very, very proud of. Yeah, and Vicki Bennett's in the book and she was just on yeah. the cover of The Wire. Yeah, absolutely. And Vicky is such a, an amazing artist. And that's actually maybe something we should talk about also because what we did talk about last time was the crowdfunder for uh, the project called An Art Apart Volume 1, which is going to be uh, one film and one book, sort of similar like the Different People book in the sense that it's an, an anthology of you know, quite deep conversations with artists who have something to say, including Vicky. Uh, so that campaign was very successful and I want to express deep gratitude, uh, many thanks, lots of love to those who contributed and an update now is basically that it's a work in progress. Um, it's going well and it is very hard to say when it will land or will be launched, but uh, definitely this year, probably early autumn, I'd say, for both the film and the book. And uh, yeah, it's a joy to be able to just, uh, you know, churn out these things. Many of these interviews uh, in the Anarda part of things, they are not quite old in the sense that, you know, seven, eight years, then there are newer ones. There are also interviews in there that have not been shot for film. Um, Joe Coleman, Alison Blickle, uh, uh, JG Thurwell, but they will all be in the book. So it will be a massive book of thoughts, feelings, uh, ideas from all the artists that you uh, either already love or that you will love. Yeah, and maybe since Vicky was on the cover of The Wire, 
to celebrate her, maybe we should show the trailer of the film you made about her because some of the Art Apart films have already been made um, and Vicky's is one of them, AKA people like us. So let's watch that. That's a great idea. Let's watch it. I think everything I do um, uh, tends to subvert uh, the content, so everything I do, uh, you know, it might be inaccurate that I say that I pick it up and put it there, it's more likely I turn it completely upside down. This is British artist Vicky Bennett. Her work within the project called People Like Us takes you on a journey into a world where literally anything can happen. I'm interested in stories and making new stories. Um, and we've got a whole world of fiction that goes back to the first story ever told. And I'm part of that tradition as well. In performances, video work, music and collages, Bennett conveys that nothing is really what it seems. The point of being a creative is to engage. You know, beyond that, I'm, I'm not sure what else there is anyway. Yeah, that was the trailer for the film uh, about Vicky Bennett uh, or people like us. Um, dear friend and a fantastic artist who now graces the cover of Wire. So check that out too. It's a great interview. Yeah, and uh, on a similar note, meaning sort of backtracking, going through the archives and seeing what's there, uh, I decided that one year after Sacred Intent, uh, my book of conversations with Genesis P. Orridge came out, I wanted to make like a photo book because I've taken a lot of pictures. And that came out and it's called uh, Temporarily Eternal temporarily eternal and it's basically a big photo book of um, uh, photographs I've taken between 1986 and 2018. Uh, so that's quite a wide scope uh, in terms of time but also it's um, kind of companion volume to Sacred Intent because that's mainly conversations between the same years 86 and 2019 there actually uh, and these are you know, a lot more, I should show this, uh, photographs basically from our travels together, from recording um, uh, the albums at Stockholm, Wordship, Loyalty Does Not End With Death, and just hanging out in New York and Stockholm, Nepal. Uh, so it really is a kind of a, definitely a declaration of love and it's like a fan book uh, with pictures, many of which have never been published before. So this uh, temporarily, temporarily internal book, I'm very proud of that because it was something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Sacred Intent sort of pushed me towards it. Uh, and Jen Dying, of course, made it another sort of reason to commemorate in images what I we had commemorated together in in the conversation in Sacred Intent. So yeah, this is a, a wonderful book that I love a lot. Yeah, and both Vicky Bennett, people like us, and Genesis Briar Prioridge are included in my book, Scansion and Psychoanalysis and Art. And we finally got the uh, author copies in the mail, a whole box of them, which is really exciting. Yeah. So now <laughs> I can hold my book in my hands. And um, the, they've both um, both of those artists are in this book as are a lot of other artists I feel like at some point I'm going to have to make a list of all the different <laughs> artists included so people can understand what's in here um, because it is about cut-ups in art and also the uh, concept of the cut in psychoanalysis um, but there's so many different artists that I go through in here because I start with photography and then I go through the birth of modern art um, talking about Van Gogh and uh, Gauguin and Baudelaire and so many people, um, Edward Munch. And then uh, I have a chapter on the art of noise where I talk about Luigi Russolo who kind of invented the first noise organ and had the first noise concert back in like 1911 or 1913. Um, 
And then going on to modern day artists that work in that genre or disrupt with their music, like John Zorn and uh, Aphex Twin, Nurse with Wound, Coil, uh, Throbbing Gristle, those sorts of things. And then I have a chapter on psychoanalysis and Dada, which I've talked a lot about with Hannah Hawk and all the Dadaists. And then uh, collage, photo montage, and assemblage, um, also kind of stemming from the Dadas, but also talking about more modern artists like Peter Beard. Um, and then a whole chapter on Marcel Duchamp because his whole career and mind frame could be seen as a cut or a disruption in itself. Um, then there's a chapter on surrealism where I talk about the, the beginnings of um, Lacanian psychoanalysis with Jacques Lacan's relationship with the surrealists. Um, he was friends with Salvador Dali. He, he was intimate with uh, the surrealists at that time in the 1920s and 30s. Um, and it had an effect on how he thought about psychoanalysis. And one of the things that I talk about in the book is, you know, how he left all of that out when he was writing his medical thesis, his dissertation, um, because he didn't think that his doctor professors would appreciate him integrating art and artistic concepts uh, with his psychological studies. But that's what he did. And that's how we got Lacanian psychoanalysis. So that's really important to mention. And I also talk about the, the group that I'm with, Das Umbehagen, and how we are kind of trying to break out of the mold of psychoanalytic institutes as well and you know, give new life to psychoanalysis in that way. Then there's a chapter called Double Mind, Cutting the Bonds of Gender, where I talk about Pierre Molinier and uh, Hans Delmer, Una Kassern, um, and Overtachi, and then the cutting edge avant-garde and experimental cinema. Where I talk about all the beat cinema, Jonas Mikas and Robert Frank and Conrad Rooks, um, Taylor Mead. And the cut-up method of the beats, that's the classic burroughs Geisen cut-up method, the Beat Hotel, and what has been sparked from there. And then the final section is called uh, When Art Becomes Life and Death. And in that, I have a chapter on acting out pop street and performance art that talks about Kuhn transmissions, uh, the Viennese actionists, uh, Gustav Brahms, and other performance artists. And then cut from the collective alternative communities, people that lived in alternative communities like Crass, and then the alternative community of Topi, Temple of Psychic Youth, which Carl makes an appearance in. And then um, body modification, polymorphous perversity and pandrogyny, which is just that, talking about Briar Peorge's work, uh, and Stellark, for example. And then uh, technology, morbidity, death, and the unexpected. And that's where I mentioned Joe Coleman's work, Francis Bacon, uh, Charlotte Rogers. So there's a lot in there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's a great book. And uh, we're, you know, we're very happy to finally have it in our hands and on our shelves. Yeah, and then the funny thing that happened is that um, even though this book came out in November, um, and then I've been making since November, since my friend Jessica was killed, I've been making a lot of cut ups and they've all cul culminated in a collage and cut up book called The Pathways of the Heart, which we also now have in our hands. Um, they actually arrived like one day within each other. So both of them kind of now that that happened and that they both arrived here like one day after the next, I see them as sort of a companion set where this is like the theory of psychoanalysis psychoanalysis and the cut and this is the an example of the practice and how I've taken it and worked with it in my own life so we'll do a flip through but you can see the collages are great basically what happened is we we um we made the mega golem book a woman manual for all times and spaces and that was kind of a practice book to see how the collages would reproduce um in this new form uh, the way that Carl's printing now and it looks fantastic mm -hmm. and so that's kind of opened the floodgates yeah. for us to make a whole bunch of other books uh now that we see how high the 
the print quality is with the new way of Carl's printing. Um, so now we have the Pathways of the Heart and then we have more books on the horizon. Mm -hmm. As always, we should add. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, another of those, um, you know, floodgate examples and also memory lane journeys was I revised and republished uh, my book called Fanzinera. And this is Fanzinera Expanded. And this is basically... Uh, um, an anthology or a collection of my mind frame and photographs and some texts and interviews from uh, between 1985 and 1988, when I had uh, mainly one fanzine called Lollipop and then another subsequent one called Acts of Interstellar Torture. Uh, and it's basically um, uh, a memory lane trip to what I was doing. I was going to a lot of shows in Stockholm, Gothenburg, London, traveling around, interviewing bands. Uh, a lot of bands came to Stockholm. I traveled out to see uh, those who didn't. Uh, and it was an amazing, fantastic, youthful, zestful uh, time, of course. But I also documented a lot, took a lot of pictures, uh, talked to people, and it became, well, what it was supposed to be, a kind of amateurish uh, uh, labor of love fanzine with uh, nerdy questions and you know photographs and record reviews and stuff like that. So I mean, I mean, just open this. We have like Sonic Youth in 1987 in Stockholm, and it's just like um, a fine. I would say a fine documentation of an era and a certain kind of music that was permeated by basically a love of the 60s that you know came back as garage rock, as it was called with amazing bands like, you know, Cramps, of course, and Gun Club and many other American, also British and also Swedish uh, bands. So uh, Fanzanera Expanded is a kind of a thick volume. It also has an introduction by the American photographer Richard Kern, who was, um, still is, a friend, and who was a guest um, in the early 90s, slept over uh, in my tiny spaceship apartment, and he sort of, you know, writes about those memories he has from this particular era. And, and uh, in the same way, meaning taking impressions from, from trips to um, other places and they have a thematic, I also made this book, which is called uh, Into Deep, uh, Snapshots from the Colorful World of Adult Entertainment. Yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, and this happened because I was traveling um, to Las Vegas at about the same time as there was this annual uh, convention or expo for the adult entertainment industry, which is like um, all these nice corporate euphemisms. Uh, but it, it's uh, really just basically portraits of uh, many, many uh, wonderful um, ladies, uh, mainly, well, there's some, some guys too, uh, who work uh, in this business. Uh, nothing too hardcore, nothing explicit, just portraiture. Um, and one day I might write about these experiences too, because I had quite a few. I went back, I think, seven or eight times to this expo because it was simply so fascinating. In America, Las Vegas, with this industry and the uh, bizarre interactions between these sort of uh, stars and starlets and uh, the fans. America is basically a fan culture. You are what you uh, consume and you want to flaunt what you consume. And this business, this um, industry is no different than any other than, for instance, sports or music or it's all super commodified uh, for good and bad, but it's I've never seen it as colorful and also as um, you know, filled with a kind of joie de vivre in a way, uh, as I have it during these um, Las Vegas, um, you know, experiences. So into deep sort of, it doesn't really sum up, but it's a beautiful insight into uh, people who are active in um, adult <laughs> entertainment um, from basically 1995 up, to, up until 2010. A lot of people that I met are in this book. Yeah, so photo books, it's the way of the future. And there will be more. There will be more, yes, indeed.
yeah. speaking of that the next book that we're working on so we've had our patreon for a couple of years now and something that we added around when the pandemic started last year was something called magic monday for the 23rd mind level for people who are interested in magical practices and want to know specifically what we do um, because magic is a part of both of our day-to-day -day lives it's you know it's just part of us and it's happening all the time. So to talk about that a little bit every week. So we started this uh, Magic Monday kind of stream on our Patreon. And after a year of Magic Mondays, we decided to kind of look back at the year and we realized this is pretty interesting stuff. And yeah. we have a lot of great photos and stories of things we've done. And plus it also happened to coincide with the year of the pan the first year of the pandemic, yeah. I'll say. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have written to us that are part of our Patreon saying how helpful it was and kind of inspiring and helped them to kind of get through the day to day of this like lockdown and pandemic time. Uh, so that was really nice to hear. So we decided to share it more widely and we're making it into a Magic Monday book called Magic Monday is Every Day. Mm -hmm. Every day is Magic Monday. Yeah. It's Magic Monday every day of the week. That's there what you it's, go. <laughs> it's called. And <laughs> yeah, I can only sort of uh, amplify and uh, agree that it's been a very interesting thing for us to sort of uh, come up with uh, things to write about. And it's been much, for me, easier than I thought at first because we both have a lot of experience, uh, lifelong experience of dealing with these things and thinking about them. So you have the practice, but you also have the theory and you have a network on the library and all these things mesh into a weekly kind of missive in a way. And when you put it together and anthologize it, it becomes something else. It becomes uh, one unit uh, well, based on parts, of course, but it's not like s tiny little missives. It becomes a massive missive that has a unity. And we hope, as always, that it will be inspiring for people to take part of this. And uh, the Magic Monday book has uh, all of these texts and it has uh, most of the photographs or illustrations that have been in the, the Patreon posts also. Uh, because uh, for us, it's been inspiring and we have had feedback from people, from our patrons, that it's inspiring. And we also hope that it will be inspiring for you now also with the book. Um, it's Magic Monday every day of the week and it'll be coming out sometime in the during the summer, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I'll talk about is that I had another album come out in this interim time. And that was with Swedish Sonic Mastermind Per Olund. Um, and it's called Follow My Voice. It's dedicated to Hatshepsut um, because I had a very magical experience uh, at her temple when I was there with Carl in Egypt in the fall of 2018. Um, and so this, like always, comes with a collage that I've made, um, different collages for different pieces. They're all original. And it comes with a CD, and it comes with um, a contact sheet. So that's called Follow My Voice with Per Olund. If you like the uh, material, we have the CD physical available at Trapart. And then if you just want to listen or download through Bandcamp, it's at our Bandcamp as well. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> and and uh, as, uh, yeah, we always like to recommend the Bandcamp because that's now our center. That's now our hub for the music. Um, we're lagging behind a bit in terms of up, upgrading or updating the Spotify and iTunes. So Bandcamp feels more like a solid environment where everything actually exists and you can stream or also buy uh, from, from them which is a good thing. Yeah, I mean, so obviously we've been very creative uh, and our friends, our network, uh, they've also been very creative and productive and they keep sending us stuff. And we're, again, very, very grateful for that. And we're going to try our hardest uh, to um, mention it on uh, these episodes of 23rd Mind TV and also in other social media platforms. And uh, you do, I think, you know, we have been getting a lot. And if uh, we have missed something, we will find out and then we will mention it sort of retrospectively. But what we do have now... Um, is some interesting stuff and it's kind of a funny story. We were, you know, traveling around um, just 
taking a little trip to get away from Stockholm, traveling safely, of course, but just to get more into nature and and um, uh, going to this part of Sweden called Berg, Bergslagen, which is like deep forest, very beautiful, good for forest walking and just, you know, hiking a bit. And when we're out um, hiking, uh, just this little tiny dirt road, basically, a car passes us by and uh, we don't think any more of that, but we just keep walking. Then the car comes back and it turns out that it's a friend who lives nearby who I haven't seen in decades, um, but he used to be a part of you know, the Topi gang who became a very successful musician. His name is Henrik Björk, also known as Nordvarg, or from his earlier project, Poupe Fabrik. So that was an incredible sort of random meeting in uh, the forest <laughs> or on the dirt road uh, in Bergslagen, which was wonderful. So we had a chance to, to uh, exchange not only pleasantries, but also products. Henrik is incredibly productive. And and uh, just pumps out records with with uh, uh, Nordvari and uh, uh, various projects, and it's just um, incredible to see someone so diligent and making the music that he loves. Way way back, I knew him as Poupe Fabric, uh, which is like synthy EBM kind of. Um, stuff, but later on it's morphed and become immersed in dark ambient and very skillfully so. It's, it's a, he's a musician that I really respect. Uh, so in that sense, you should check out his stuff, Henrik Björk, m- today more commonly known as Nordvari. Uh, he's available on social media and has a great site and stuff like that too. So that was uh, a wonderful experience. Uh, what, that's what happens when you sort of leave your home <laughs> once in a while yeah and then uh, our friend susanna also known as susan atkins on uh, instagram uh, she sent us these great pieces um, that she created that have uh, parts of jen literally genesis's hair and some other special items inside so we want to thank susanna for those we love them so much we mm-hmm. cherish them and they are on our altars and we want to recommend her shop she has a shop called the psychic shop and it's also on instagram i'll link to it below but she makes these great handcrafted items little boxes and um, specialty items that she sells on her shop and they're all really lovely and very skillfully Mm -hmm. executed really really detailed and tastefully done yeah no i love that kind of stuff and and her stuff uh, specifically is very beautiful Uh, people have uh... What do you call it? Like diligent fingers. They're very skillful in the uh, putting together of these almost, uh, not almost, but these actually talismanic uh, objects. Mm-hmm. And that's true, of course, for records and record designs and people who have any kind of cottage industry uh, setup going on. Uh, we're trying, and I think we're doing a good job, but there are always people out there who are masters. And Susanna is, is uh, definitely one of them uh, with skill and aesthetic, uh, I don't know, a beauty. Um, so check out her store yeah and then of course uh, not a show um, goes by without any <laughs> stuff coming from from our friend Adele Sutu in in, uh, in the US um, these are uh, as you can see horizontal and vertical they're photo books and Adele is a great photographer chronicling um, the the um, vast country of America because he travels a lot in America. So he has a chance to to photograph uh, all these weird empty spaces. Um, you just documenting uh, remnants and remains of what once was great, like uh, run-down things, uh, car carcasses, uh, basically, it's part of, of, of Americana too and an American photographic tradition. Adele is very skilled at that. So we highly recommend um, his photo books. You could um, check the link uh, for his site in the information for this episode. And Adele also, of course, makes music, mainly as uh, Project 156 or 156. And it's always great stuff. So um, thank you, Adele, for sending all these things. You are doing great work, that's for sure. Yeah, and then I also wanted to mention uh, our friend Gary Lachman. 
He's been putting together a documentary on Colin Wilson, and I just got the uh, art in the mail because um, I supported, they had a Kickstarter and I supported their film project. And Gary's written many, 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 many books, um, but he has written a book about Colin Wilson, and I thought that I would show that as well. Uh, it's beyond the robot mm -hmm. we, it's a great book yeah we saw a documentary on colin wilson and i'll say i think that gary's going to do an amazing job because the one we saw was very sweet but i think that gary will definitely do colin wilson justice by making it because his book is phenomenal mm -hmm. yeah and i think that this uh if anything this year has been great in that sense is to see it, these uh, creative projects sort of sprouting up and the culture of crowdfunding, which uh, we have been, you know, uh, successful recipients of, but also we have supported projects. And I think that's a very, very beautiful sort of grassroots way of uh, acting and interacting and uh, getting projects uh, off the ground that might not otherwise get off the ground. So if it's really worthwhile, and especially when you know that the project is in competent hands, uh, Gary and also the other people involved in the Colin Wilson film are very, very competent people and they will make a great film. I'm convinced of that and I look forward to seeing it also. Yeah, and Gary was one of the speakers at our first conference on psychoanalysis, Art and the Occult in London in 2016, mm -hmm. which will actually be celebrating our five-year anniversary from that conference. Um, it was May 5th through 8th, so in 2016. Yeah. So five years anniversary of that coming up. And Gary's talk is included in the Fenris Wolf Volume 9, which we still have a few, like three or four copies left of the hard brown limited edition that comes with a signed print of Val Dunham's Venus Castina. So grab that while it still exists mm -hmm. if you so desire. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that's happened is I was on podcast with Andrew McLuhan and uh, he has a podcast called The Massage and I was his second guest, which was a total honor. He started the McLuhan Institute, which you can also support on Patreon. Um, he's doing great work carrying on uh, the tradition of his grandfather, Marshall McLuhan and his father, Eric McLuhan. And he's also just come out with his own book of poetry called Written Matter. And I just got that in the mail and it's on Revelor Press and Revelor Press are dear friends of ours as well. So it's really fun to see when like people we love know other people we love and make things together. Magic babies. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the things that I didn't realize was going to happen out of our conferences, but that's been a wonderful surprise is that, you know, I bring all together all these people that we love and all the, this work that we love. And then those people meet and then they like each other's work and then they end up working together and there just ends up being more amazing things in the world that we get to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's really wonderful. Yeah, it's basically a synergetic orgy. Okay. Yeah. Intellectual. If you say yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Um, and then I also made during this time, uh, I have been diligently working away the whole like winter on getting up videos for all of the rendering unconscious podcast episodes. Uh, of which now there are 137 episodes. Some of them I had the actual footage of the interview um, of me and the other person speaking. And some of them uh, we had the actual footage of lectures that were given at our various conferences. So I put those up on YouTube. And then for the ones that we didn't have the footage uh, of, um, the actual video, then I made uh, cut up collage kind of films to go along with each episode so that they're all there now. And that way the transcription of every episode is available for those who would like that. Um, it's up at YouTube. And yeah, that was quite a feat because I, let me tell you in all my free time, like morning till night for literally months, that's what I've been doing is sitting here and like editing these videos together. Um, and I'm so happy it's done and it's really been uh, a feat. And then at the same time, um, somebody asked me, you know, about how many 
um, views or listens the podcast has had. And I wasn't sure, but then once I checked the kind of all time views on the podcast stream, the High Brother Life stream and the Tripart Film YouTube channel, which hosts Rendering a Conscious podcast, we're up at 250,000 streams. Um, so that is a lot of streams and we're very excited about that. Yeah, quantity is a quality. So thank you all, because thank I hadn't you. actually realized that, that that many people had listened uh, and viewed and that's really wonderful I mean when I was doing psychology psychoanalytic events on art and magic and psychoanalysis in uh, New York I mean we would always get like 40 or 50 people at an event and that was really amazing and I was like I'm so glad that this many people want to listen to this <laughs> listen about psychoanalysis and art and magic um, but apparently when you get to do it kind of online worldwide, there's a whole lot more people that actually want to listen to this. And yeah. that's really great because they're all things that I love and I love the confluence of all of them as well. So mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, we should mention that uh, this thing that it's been five years since the first uh, psych art cult um, conference. And it's been an amazing uh, five years. And we, I think we have achieved a lot in terms of uh, output, but also input. So um, here's to the next five. Yeah. And I think people always ask like, you guys seem so busy. What are you doing all the time? How do you get so much done? But I, I was thinking about that actually this morning because somebody asked me that like yesterday when I was doing a podcast with them. And it, I think it's because Carl and I got together, you know, working on this project of the psychoanalysis and art and the occult conference. We were friends before that. And then we were working on this conference together we decided to do together in London and then we ended up hooking up there and now we're married and live here and so I think because of that like that's that's how we get along like we just love to always continue to work on projects together so in our free time we're not like having a beer at the pub we're like home making books yeah. <laughs> basically um that's what we like to do so, so highly recommended life yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. It keeps us off the streets, as That's Carl right. said. That's keeps right. our fingers busy. Yeah. Um, and since I have been making so many videos for the podcast, I had been kind of neglecting my practice of just making videos for songs, which is what I used to love to do. So I intentionally wanted to make sure that I did that uh, recently. And so I made a video for this older song that we did called Rooftops and Basements, which is a really special song for us. All of our songs have special meaning and, and some of them are have kind of life events of ours cut up into them, into the song. So we know a lot of these kinds of things that are being said in the song that maybe other people don't know about or aren't picking up. Um, but this is a special song for us, Rooftop and Rooftops and Basements. And I made this video for it, which we can watch. Um, but before that, I just want to show you the box that it comes in. It's for an album called Switching Mirrors, which ended up being two albums um, that we put out on Highbrow Low Life Interpart Editions. And it comes in this box if you're interested in the actual physical CD form. And this actually... Um, comes with photos of us as well as usual different photos and ooh, and title sheets and cds and two cds two cds mm -hmm. and we have this wonderful scan of like the larger collage that the collages the individual collages are cut from and then everybody gets a piece of kind of original collages. I think I made three or four of them and then cut them into these sections. Mm. Um, and this box is bigger than the others. Um, so I hope you love it. And let's watch the video. Let's watch Rooftops the video. Taps and basements. Churches. churches. It is it present, is present throughout. throughout. Muscles, Muscles bones, bones, in a body, in a body are, are free. free. Southern, Southern Bell, Bell there's stuff. There's stuff. There's, there's someone, someone I, I produced, produced by, by and for. 
doctor's, doctor's appointment, appointment are, are metamorphosis. metamorphosis. The Dada, the Dada surrealism. surrealism. What are you, what doing, are you doing here? here? And, comfort. and comfort. Let's apply, Let's apply in future, in future whatsoever. whatsoever. We all we die. die. And brought, brought on, on another. another. Charles, Charles both, both once said. said. And submission. And submission. Even, Even in, in the, beating, the beating, as well as, well as, the, as one, the one, they hugged. And, and was, the, was word. the word. Bin, Bin word. word. You, you in the in word. The word. Rooftops and, basement. and basements for you. For you. Yeah, that was uh, Rooftops and Basements from the album Albums Switching and Mirrors. Yeah, and those are over at Bandcamp as well. Mm -hmm. so you can check them out there. Mm -hmm. Great. I think that was about it for this episode. Yeah, We're that was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> We're happy that we made another episode. We'll try to, you know, keep up the regular pace. Um, but if not, there will be eventually, you know, uh, occasional bursts of product placement uh, and keep sending us stuff. We will absolutely try our hardest to mention everything that we get. And of course we'll carry on with producing a lot of books and a lot of other things. And we'll keep it posted and present them right here in the 23rd Mind TV. Thank you for watching. <laughs>